Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Um, today I've decided to do a test run on our past life oracle and get some people identifiers as well as a little bit of advice from the ancestor spirit oracle just to tap into some past life thing we might need to know at this time um, that might lead to filling in a void somewhere for the current lifetime journey whatever answer thought insight you might need at this time um, I never know what I come up with so uh, we'll see how this goes um, for me personally it's like usually when I tap into something past lifey I know it means something for my current lifetime and it's usually fun because it'll be it give me an opportunity to explore it a little bit you know so this will just be sort of a stepping stone in that for you um, and we'll see what comes up so go ahead focus on the three piles ahead um, I will put timestamps down below if more than one pile calls to you great in any order great <laughs> Um, you can jump around if you want, however you feel intuitively guided to do so. All right. All right, if you picked pile A, so that I can reach it without dropping everything. All right. The past life oracle says leaving or travel and Native American. So it could be a situation where there was a tribe that you're part of or that you knew somebody of um, that might have been exiled or moved or relocated in some form or fashion. That may be relative, perhaps by someone of higher education. Perhaps you were related by marriage or, you know, some other external, <laughs> not direct, not blood related. And your ancestor spirit oracle is awaken your inner shaman. So perhaps you could have also been some sort of traveling, perhaps. Maybe there was some interfamilial mingling between tribes. That's another possibility as well. All right. Awaken your inner shaman, connect, invoke, and heal. For the two vans, every part of nature, every rock, river, mountain, animal, and tree has a spirit, story, and purpose. They also hold great respect for the souls of their ancestors. Nomadic cattle herders who live in yurts, the two vans have lived in southern Siberia for thousands of years. As providers of healing, wisdom, ritual, and divination, the shaman is central to two van society. Shamans walk between worlds to communicate with spirits and provide answers and guidance for the community. Protectors of the earth and guardians of nature, each shaman chooses an apprentice from within the family. Hmm. Here we go with the in-laws step connections, perhaps. Thus, shamanic knowledge is shared and preserved through the ages. So this seems like this is where your higher education could also be a thing as well. And it doesn't necessarily have to be Siberian, or maybe you do have connections with two different native tribes where you were a shaman, one being in, you know, Native American and another being Siberian. So that should be fun to research, right? And see if you connect further. The path of the shaman calls to you. Focus on your connection with the earth, animals, and nature spirits. Whoever you are or wherever you come from, the shamanic way is open to you. Shamans can be male or female and come from many cultures around the world. A healer, seer, or shaman in your ancestry may have passed their gift or special knowledge to you. If you do not know your family lineage, dig deep and ask the universe to help you discover your ancestors' spirits. And that's particularly helpful with past life stuff because that's a little hard to connect with. Although sometimes our past life connections do actually overlap with our current life too. So that's also a possibility could indicate the in-law and the step connection as well, somewhere around. If you do, okay, continue to connect with the earth, nature, and animal spirits, and you will uncover your ancestral link. You can then tap into the spiritual knowledge and further develop your gifts. As advice on the card, you are a natural healer and hold the ability to connect to the restorative light of the universe for yourself and others. It is time to embrace or further your healing path. You have been using these gifts for a long time, over many lifetimes. Each person heals in their own way. 
You may use words, your hands, or energy to nurture others. Explore different aspects and modalities of the healing arts, such as massage, Reiki, or something that opens you as a channel for rejuvenating energy. You can use anything you learn to benefit yourself and others. When you are healing others, surround yourself with golden light so you do not become drained. When you are ready, invoke the healing energy of the shaman and pass your knowledge on to others. Another thing that popped up too is the leaving or travel tells me that maybe there might be some sort of portal connection with energy management. So um, gatekeeper light work comes to mind. And since tribal could also be grid work oriented. Yeah, I'm getting that feeling. So um, see if that uh, there's something there that you could learn from that you might be adopting in this lifetime. Or if um, it's just a little part of um, a you know, puzzle piece of a bigger picture, right? Sometimes you never know how it's going to lead. All right. At 625, if you have picked, hold on a sec, timestamp, pile B, we'll see what past life connection knowledge you need. You have the arts. You have communal living. You have spouse and greatest generation. So this sounds like a more recent um, past life connection that you'll be learning from. Um, from these cards, I'm really feeling sort of like um, some kind of musical troupe or um, traveling theater group or circus, maybe. Hmm. And maybe it's by relation of marriage, too, because the spouse card is here, or it could indicate that you had been married during that time. And greatest generation, I think, leads from somewhere in the late 1800s, roughly, something like that, early 1900s. So 19th century, 20th century, and even into the 21st century. So it could be any culture like that. Okay. And your ancestor spirit oracle has re-energized your life, clear, positive space, and harmony. And that's a culture from the East. So maybe there's an Eastern culture that is a traveling arts, entertainment sort of thing. I'm not familiar, so <laughs> maybe that would be fun to research and see because Re-Energize Your Life talks a lot about uh, feng shui, so we'll get into it, okay? Feng shui dates back over 3,000 years to the early two culture of China. Ancient Chinese capital cities followed feng shui to orient and design buildings, graves, temples, and tombstones. During the Zhao era, feng shui rules were codified, uh, meaning they made it into law and included in craft manuals. Based on astronomy, feng shui aims to create harmony in an environment to enhance the well-being of occupiers. Auspicious placement and design influence energy flow and spiritual forces so that good energy, qi, is gathered and negative energy is reduced. Perhaps these arts had something to do with feng shui or at least energy management in some kind of way. Um, a, a space, right? Like an environment. People believed they were coming into contact with different energies everywhere they went, so they sought to create safe, positive spaces for themselves. Many people around the world continue to follow this ancient art to invite balance and positive energy into their home or workplace. And the arts and the communal living could be both, right? Okay. The ancestors say when you feel emotionally overwhelmed, physically drained, or bombarded by negativity, take notice and make a change. Reordering your schedule, reorienting your priorities, or organizing your space will improve the flow of your life. And that kind of tells me, too, that uh, the way folks might have been operating at that time had to do things at certain times of the day for whatever reason, right? Um, so it was a little bit more regimented, maybe not so free-flowing. 
and they needed to create that free flow within feng shui or some aspects similar to feng shui, right? If there are objects in your environment that trigger memories of feelings that lower your mood or confidence, remove them from view. You do not need to hold on to negativity from the past. Create an environment that is kind, supportive, motivating, and positive, and enjoy newfound energy and enjoyment. The advice from the card is follow the principles of feng shui. So maybe it's not directly related to China or the East, so it could be anywhere, but something similar to it, right? Okay. To balance the energy in each room of your home or office. This will help promote good health and abundance for you and everyone around you. Do not feel guilty for wanting to remove objects and negative people or situations from your life. When you clear out the clutter, you make way for new energy and opportunities. This could also be a person that is of the greatest generation um, that may have enjoyed feng shui or Eastern culture as well. That's a thought, <laughs> an intuitive thought. <laughs> Ping, <laughs> I love it when that happens. All right, there you go. Hopefully that helps. All right, at 12, 11, 27, pile C, what do we got? We have male, female, we have baby. You see that okay? All right, female gender, okay, could be the baby or the female in this situation could be a male, female relationship that had a baby that was a female. <laughs> or maybe they just didn't know the gender of the baby something having to do with baby and X generation. So it's newer past life, perhaps connection and your ancestor spirit oracle is teach and share and still instruct, educate. Could indicate you might've been a teacher in a past life or related to a teacher in a past life or maybe a baby of a teacher in a past life. Hmm. Teach and share. Buddhism was introduced to Tibet in the seventh century, where it developed in relative isolation. Over the centuries, the unique culture, identity, and language of the region became inseparably linked to Tibetan Buddhism, where great emphasis is placed on spiritual masters, masters and teachers of Dharma. So perhaps there could be a Buddhist teacher connection. Okay. These teachers called lamas complete extensive study over many years to prepare for their role in providing healing initiations and ceremonies and teaching their traditions, beliefs, insights, and wisdom. The lamas, monks, and nuns also have the added responsibility of protecting and promoting Tibet's environment, language, and culture. Tibetan lamas and monks devote their lives to the study and practices of Buddhism. However, religious practice is part of daily life for most Tibetans. Many families throughout the ages have proudly sent a child to a monastery to be educated as a monk. Maybe that's your baby connection. The ancestors say, you are not alone. You may be questioning why you are here and what your true purpose is. This card has appeared to let you know that you are a natural teacher and it is part of your life purpose. You don't need to be a school teacher or a child care worker. You can show people a new way of being or looking at the world. You may be teaching your children or grandchildren everyday things, or you may be encouraging a friend to try something new or different. Value the wisdom and skills you can pass on to others. Additional advice for this card, look at the ways you can incorporate teaching or mentoring into your life so others may benefit. You have the ability to connect with people from all walks of life and show them the way. Try not to overthink this aspect of your purpose. You may already be teaching others without even realizing it. Enjoy sharing your gifts with others because sharing also helps teach. You lead by example, right? <laughs> or just kind of letting folks know how you've experienced things and they might learn something from that. <laughs> all right. So maybe there's a connection there to go and explore, right? Check it out. Be intuitively guided. See what see what pops up. You never know. It might be fun. You know, learn something new. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Bye.